Hi everyone, I'm Angela from Angela Wolf Video and this is Video Tech Tuesdays where we talk about video tech specs and gear. Um, this week is a little bit different because typically my Video Tech Tuesdays are live at 1 o'clock on every Tuesday, but this week uh, Angela Wolf Video is working on a very big exciting project and we are out of the office, on site, filming all day long and so i wanted to still be able to bring everyone a video at one o'clock on tuesday so this one is pre-recorded and i've set this as a premiere on facebook and youtube so i'm still going to post it on instagram as well so please still absolutely comment if you have any questions at all i will be happy to answer them either in your in the comments or um in next week's video so uh, even though this one's pre-recorded, I thought it would still be really important to uh, talk about something new and fun in, uh, in the gear world. So, if you are anything like me, uh, you just like spend your whole day looking for an excuse to buy some new gear. And so, the, the gear I wanted to talk about this week um, are boom mics. So we're going to talk about how to use a boom mic, why to use a boom mic, and all of that fun stuff. So let's get started. All right. Um, so what is a boom mic? Um, typically, it's a shotgun mic that's put onto a boom pole. This is the quintessential thing about like you're thinking about someone making a movie, right? You always think of they have the slate, the clapper in the beginning, and then you have sound, which is the person holding the giant pole uh, with the microphone on it. That's our boom pole. That's what we're talking about today. Now, uh, typically the boom pole has an XL cable at the top and at the bottom so that it's really easy uh, to attach the microphone um, and you don't have to worry about like cables moving back and forth. So if you buy a proper boom pole, that's what it's going to have like this so you see at the top built in it has an xlr cable then at the very bottom it also has um a connection so that you can plug your xlr cable into the bottom that way you don't have to uh, wrap anything around the pole itself the pole also telescopes so it gets bigger um and it's just super very convenient to have one of these uh so i'm very excited to be showing everyone that today so that's what the boom pole is and then you just put a regular regular shotgun mic on top here is our shotgun microphone so uh this one is the sennheiser mke 600 um it's a little bit more affordable um it's not like top of the line at all but sennheiser is a, a wonderful brand especially you know in the audio world um and for something like this i actually got it as a whole kit on b h for around six hundred dollars so that included the boom pole the windscreen the xlr cables like everything with this microphone of course you can always buy each individual part separately too if you're looking to make something a little bit more custom and a little bit more nicer uh but today we're going to just be talking about booms in in general and how to be using them in your shoots uh, they're really, really great for interviews. They're really great um, for when you're talking between two people, actually, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but there's lots of uses for it, and it sounds really beautiful. So let me move this microphone. There you go. Um, so there's two different ways to like really that you'll see like boom mics either you have a boom operator right the person holding the boom and moving it around and that's what you're going to want if you have multiple people uh talking in the scene or in the interview or if people are walking around obviously right we we want to be able to move the microphone with the subjects and that's when you want a boom operator now if you have someone sitting down and it's only one person talking you can put the boom on a c stand and mount it um so that you don't have to have someone actually operating it but that it's still you know pointing in the right direction it's still picking up everything the way it's supposed to so kind of why are we using 
um, a shotgun mic on a boom versus just mounting it to the top of your camera, which is absolutely something you can do. Um, the the benefit of using the boom pole is that uh, shotgun mics are very directional. All right, so um, wherever you're pointing the microphone is where it's picking it up. All right, so. Um, if you put this microphone nice and close to your subject using a boom pole, you're going to get much cleaner audio and it's going to help um, cut out any outside audio that you're going to have um, in the background, all right? Versus when you put it farther away from your subject, it's still that directional, right? It's still getting anything that's directly in front of it, but now there's more things in front of it, right? Instead of having only that one person talking in front of your microphone, you're going to have uh, the whole room kind of like this shape of the audio. Um, so you're going to get a lot more interference that way. So we always recommend, that's why we want to put the shotgun mic on the boom pole instead of just mounting a shotgun mic on top of the camera. Um, the other great thing about the boom being on a pole uh, is that you can move it like the boom operator, right? So when we have multiple people talking, we're gonna wanna face the boom towards the person currently speaking, all right? Uh, so you just, usually it's just like that little, like you're holding it, it's facing one direction, twist, faces the other direction, twist, faces back. It's really simple. Um, you just get like quite the arm workout holding the boom mic up for long periods of time. But by able to just like that, like quick little like rotation, you're facing the boom towards the exact person talking, the exact place the audio is coming from, and you're gonna get a cleaner, uh, just much nicer sound. Um, and that's one reason that if you have multiple subjects in the shot, you're gonna need a boom operator and not just putting it on a stand. Um, now, voice comes from your chest. Everyone always likes to think like, oh, this is, it, it comes right out of my mouth, so I have to put the microphone at my mouth. Boom mics and shotgun mics, we always wanna point it right here, right to the person's chest. Whether you're coming from above or below, always be pointing at the subject's chest to get like a full sound. You're going to get like a warmer tone. You're going to get their full voice instead of something that's just coming out of um, their head, like their head voice. Um, now, there's different ways that we can point the boom mic. Typically, what you're probably going to see in, you know, uh, shots of like behind the scenes in Hollywood, usually we point the boom down. We hold it above our heads, point the microphone down at the person's chest in front of them, of course. Um, that is really great if you want to get uh, people walking and you hear their footsteps in the background. If uh, you have a ceiling and you don't want the reverb of someone's voice bouncing off the ceiling, you know, you want to be po pointing the microphone downward. Um, it's really great. Usually that's what you use when you're filming inside. It's also good because typically you don't want too much headroom um, between the top of your head and the top of the, the uh, frame. And so that means the boom can get really like right there, just right, right out of frame and uh, can still be very close to the person. Now, if you're, let's say you're outside and you're filming on some really hard concrete, uh, you don't have to worry about any reverb from above, right? Because it's just the sky, but we're having reverb from below from the concrete. That's when maybe you want to turn the microphone upside down and have it pointing from under the person still pointing at their chest. Um, again, there's, it's just kind of depends on the shot, you know, if there's specifically a lot of headroom or maybe the shot is panning up and you would see the microphone if you had put the microphone above the person, that's when you want to put it below. Uh, you know, like if it, if someone's walking, it's probably going to get in their way of walking. So you want to put the microphone from above, you know, it just really depends on the way your shots framed up and uh, what other where other noises are coming from in your space you know if there's like a lot of overhead planes then you don't want this the microphone pointing upward you know stuff like that it's so um 
there's no like hard and fast rule on that one. It just depends on your circumstances and and where you are in the world uh, <laughs> at that moment when you're filming. Um, now, speaking of filming outside, uh, you definitely want to put a windscreen on your microphone when you're outside recording audio ever, anywhere, doesn't matter what type of microphone you're using, you need a windscreen. Uh, for the shotgun mics and for our, uh, that you put on your boom pole, you have what we call a dead cat, <laughs> right? It's like this fuzzy thing, right? It's the, you, everyone's seen it, it's, it's fuzzy. Um, these like come with, like it has foam on the inside, fuzzies on the outside. You just slip it on. To your microphone and it really cuts down on the wind uh you can also get what they call like a blimp which is like the hardcover one and even put like the fuzzy dead cat around the blimp to make it like extra amazingly good for outside um those are more expensive they're harder to kind of put together and they're not as simple as you just slip it right on real quick so it just depends on how much you're looking to invest and how often you're going to be filming outside and how quickly you need to have your setup so Right now, all I have is the fuzzy one, um, but definitely, like I said, you need to use something when you're filming outside. Another thing you want to do is most uh, shotgun mics, let me take this off so you can actually see, uh, have a low cut, <laughs> we'll see if we ever get in, in focus. So we have a low cut setting. So uh, when it's just a straight line there's no low cut and when it's like kind of like a crooked line up that means you put your your low cut center on uh that is going to just cut out any wind noise like anything that's like at a certain low frequency it just like kind of cuts it so that helps again if you're outside and recording and it's really windy so you want to put a windshield on and put your low cut uh setting on for your microphone itself um now lastly you can plug the uh, microphone directly into your camera if you have the right cable so part of the kit i got has an xlr two quarter inch jack um, cable so i can do the, the xlr on one side quarter inch or an eighth inch jack on the other side into my camera um, for my dslr or my c100 has xlr input so i can just do directly into the camera however while that sounds easier, um, the camera doesn't have the full range that a um, field recorder would. Uh, you have less, um, you can do, you, you have less control over it for like, you know, tweaking the audio and getting the like the perfect sound out of it. So I really do recommend that while you can plug it directly into your camera, plug it into a field recorder instead and record the audio separately always always still record audio on your camera because then afterwards in post it's a lot easier to sync if there's audio on both ends and you just it's called scratch audio when you record audio uh, just on your on-camera microphone so you use that scratch audio for syncing purposes but then you record the good audio on a separate recorder in a separate uh, file so that's pretty much my quick overview of boom mics um the reason i brought this up especially now with covid is that you can see this boom pole can go six feet or more right so this is a great way to to keep your social distance during a shoot um and of course the you know when you're using lav mics they are right next to the, they're touching the person you have to touch the person to put it on them you have to clean it and disinfect which i do with all of my lav mics when i use them however it's just extra steps and it's a little bit harder um to do so we do recommend when you're doing shoots right now during covid to use a boom mic another general reason to use a boom mic over a lav is that it's not something you see in the camera right so like right now you obviously see we can't use a studio mic on a normal shoot because it's right here in front of me um and for podcasts and live streams like this it's fine but like for a marketing video this is not what you want in your shot no or if you think about it 
in uh, movies, you don't ever see people wearing lav mics, right? You Because they always use booms. And that would really take you out of the moment, is if you're watching a video that's um, supposed to be like set somewhere like an ad that's like set in a coffee shop, right? You don't want to be thinking about like, oh, I see their microphone. This is really staged, right? You don't want to get pulled out of that scene. That's why you want to use a boom. And then of course, lavs tend to be a little bit more of um, an isolated sound. Uh, it's really, really only picking up right here. They're quiet so that they don't pick up too much other noise. The, the boom while it's very directional and does help cut out background noise it just has like a warmer tone you get the full like you hear more of the room uh you don't feel like you're like in like an isolated void somewhere uh you you, you kind of get more warmth um and more atmosphere in with your boom mic um and the shotgun mic and so that kind of also helps just like set the scene a little bit and make it more comforting to listen to even if people don't necessarily think of it like that uh it's like a subconscious thing so those are all the fun reasons you might want to be using a boom mic on your next video shoot. And um, of course, if you hire a boom operator, they typically come with their own gear, but of course, that always costs more. So um, as per usual, what I like to say is uh, if you want to do it yourself, that's great. Uh, go to bit.ly slash awv checklist it's in my bio in my link tree on instagram or right here on the screen if you're on facebook and youtube um go there it's a branded video checklist download it completely free helps you figure out in your pre-production stage of like what should your video be about uh how big's the production how many people are going to be in it how much crew do you need all that good stuff and maybe you say wow that's a lot of stuff and like oh my god six hundred dollars for a microphone sounds insane angela what are you doing um then your next step would be to go to bit.ly slash call awv again in my link tree in my bio on instagram on there you set up a free project analysis call with me absolutely free we just hop on the phone talk for half an hour and um basically uh figure out what you need for video like you tell me your project and tell me what you're thinking and then I can tell you, okay, I think we're gonna need two cameras, we'll need the boom, we'll have you know, two days of filming, X amount of editing, this is what the cost would be. No obligation, free analysis, you take that information, do what you want with it. So those are the ways that you can you know, start your journey on doing marketing and branded videos because we know as the end of the year is approaching because we're in october now um we're like halfway through october Whew. um the end of the year is approaching we have to ramp up our marketing we can't let people forget about us a lot of customers um are looking to buy things at the end of the year and uh services and products really like start to sell during the holidays so do not fret. This is the perfect time to start your projects. Um, and both my checklist and my free analysis call are perfect ways to get your brand on the right track for video projects. All right. So I will see everyone next week live then. Uh, I really appreciate you watching my recorded video. I am sorry I can't answer your questions live, but please still comment. I will respond to them. Uh, either in the comments or next week. And of course, if you have any questions, any topics you want me to cover, please let me know. All right, now everyone have a great week and I will see everyone next week. Thank you so much. Bye.